Hello, what's up, it's CD back with a video. So today, as a lot of you have been asking for, I have my season 13 console settings. So in this video, I'll be going over my gameplay settings, my controller settings, so my button layout, my ALC settings, my video settings, and my audio settings. Also give like a little rundown of a lot of the settings and why I choose them over another, and whether or not I actually recommend those settings. So without further ado, let's get right into the settings. So starting off in gameplay, interact prompt style, I have that on compact. Button hints, I usually have this off. Crosshair damage feedback, I have this on X. A lot of people like to have this off so it's less clutter on your screen. You don't get those little indicators. If you have it on X, you do get those indicators. The reason I recommend having it on X is so if I use a grenade or like a different ability and I'm hitting an enemy while I'm not actually looking at them, I can still tell that I'm doing damage. You see that little X indicator? If I have that off, then I wouldn't know that I'm hitting the enemy. Damage numbers, I have this on stacking. It's a good middle ground between having it on off and having it on both. If you have it on both, it's just too much information. It's a lot of clutter. If you have it off, then you literally don't know how much damage you're doing. So having it on stacking is a good middle ground. Ping opacity, I have that on faded. Obituaries, this is personal preference. I have that on. Minimap rotation, personal preference, off. Weapon auto cycle on empty, I have that off. Auto sprint, I keep that on. Double tap to sprint, this doesn't matter because I have auto sprint on, but I have that off right now. Jetpack control, I recommend having this on hold, it allows you to use your jetpack a little bit faster. Incoming damage feedback, I keep that on 3D. Taking damage closes death box or crafting menu, you always want to have this off just because if you have it on, then you'll mess up your armor swap a lot. You'll open up a box of armor swap, you get hit by one random bullet, and it closes the death box, you won't get the armor, and it just, it's not good. So keep it off. Pop up, pop up. I'm not really sure what this does. I've always just left it on. Streamer mode. Sometimes I turn this on along with anonymous mode, depending on how I'm feeling. If I feel like I'm being targeted or I just want to remain anonymous, I'll turn it on. But for the most part, I have it off. Usage sharing, I keep that enabled. Performance display. Usually, I keep it off just because I don't like the extra information in the top right of my screen. It's a little bit too much clutter. Sometimes I'll turn it on if I'm feeling FPS drops or I feel like my internet is just not cooperating with me. I'll turn it on, but for the most part, it's off. Club invites. I'm already in my own club, so I don't need club invites. I keep that disabled. Communication filter. I have that on everybody. Radical. Right now, I'm rocking just a clean white radical. It works for me. I think it looks pretty good, but I also mess around with this a lot. If I'm feeling white is just not working, I'll switch it over to like blue, green, yellow, red, purple, pink, whatever. I switch it up a lot, but right now I'm rocking the nice clean white reticle. Colorblind mode, I have this on Deutronopia. The reason I have it on Deutronopia is because before the reticle customizer thing was out in Apex Legends, the only way to actually change a reticle was to change the colorblind mode. So I think Deutronopia made it either pink or yellow, and I just thought that worked, so I stuck with Deutronopia. The reason I still have it on and didn't switch back to default is because I got used to the different armor colors. They just felt right to me, so leaving it on Deutronopia just worked. Subtitles, keep this off. It's too much clutter if you have it on, leave it off. Subtitle size, normal. Enable accessible chat features. This lets you talk to your teammates in game by typing to them. If you're on PC with a mouse and keyboard, this doesn't really matter. If you're on console, you want to switch this to off for the most part. Unless you want to message your teammates, then you want to switch it on. The only problem with leaving it on is you can't see because I'm not in a game, but usually there's a big indicator on the left side of your screen that takes up quite a bit of space. And it's just too much clutter on the screen. Again, a lot of these settings, you just want to minimize clutter. So keep it off unless you have to talk to your teammates. Convert incoming voice to chat text. Again, clutter, keep it off. Now going over to my controller settings, button layout. I'm rocking crouch on left thumbstick, sprint on right thumbstick, and then melee on B. You can try this out if you want. This is what worked for me, but I can't 100% recommend it. Just because I also play claw and I have buttons on the back of my controller. So these settings are a little bit biased towards that. As I'm able to easily hit like melee, for example, I can easily hit that because my index finger is almost always on A, B, X, or Y. So 
that is why that button layout works for me you can try it out but really get comfortable with what works for you stick layout is on default interact slash reload button i have that on tap to use and reload just because it's a little bit faster than the other options crouch button i highly recommend having this on hold aim button also keep that on hold survival slot button i have this on off just because it allows you to inspect your gun and crack your knuckles or spin your heirloom just by clicking the same button that you would normally click to use your survival ability the only problem is now if you want to use your mobile respawn or your heat shield the only way to do it is to open up your inventory and then click on it down here a little bit of a nuisance if you have to use your ability really quickly it's going to mess you up but it's just kind of addicting being able to crack your knuckles in the game so that's why i do it trigger dead zones keep this on none unless you're accidentally shooting or accidentally aiming down sight while you're playing then you want to move it up but for the most part keep it on none menu cursor speed i have this pretty high you want to keep this as high as possible without it messing up how you're looting so if you're missing the item you want you're accidentally misclicking something you probably want to move this down a bit but for me this is high enough this is what i'm rocking works well for me these settings don't matter because i'm using alcs movement dead zone i have on small inverted look i don't know how people play it on inverted look i keep that off same with vibration keep this off it just messes up your aim to be honest at first it might feel weird not having vibrations but after a while you will never want to go back to vibrations keeping it off is the way to go now what a lot of people are probably wondering what they want to see the most is my advanced look controls so of course i have my alc settings turned on dead zone is on four percent i like to have this as low as possible before it starts messing up my aim four percent is a good middle ground for me it's what i'm rocking right now don't copy my dead zone i will say that because everyone's controller is different Everyone can handle a different dead zone. Some controllers are going to have a lot of stick drift on 4%. And some other controllers are going to have no stick drift on 4%. So you have to really figure out what works for you. I will say it's okay to have a little bit of stick drift. If your aim is moving a little bit like that, don't worry about it too much. If your aim is moving a lot, like if your screen is going like that without touching your controller, then you want to adjust your dead zone. The higher dead zone, the less stick drift, but the less fine control you have. Outer threshold, this is as low as possible on 1%. Response curve, I mess around with this a lot. I usually go between 0 and 2. Right now I'm on 1, it's a good middle ground. 0 would be linear, and around, I think, like 8 to 10 would be classic. So 1 is almost linear. The reason I don't have it on 0 most of the time is because I have a little bit more stick drift with it on zero so i like to keep it on one so there's a little bit less stick drift but still pretty much the same linear feeling my proptic settings i have it on one 1.3 1 1.4 1 and then 1.5 the reason i like to turn up my sensitivity with higher sights is because it allows me to control my recoil a little bit easier with different sights so that is why I turn up my settings on my different optics. Now these settings are my hip fire sense. So my yaw speed and pitch speed, I have this equal on 320. Then my extra yaw, my extra pitch, this would be the extra sensitivity added to these numbers. When I push all the way to either the right, left, up or down on my thumbstick. So yaw would be horizontal, pitch would be vertical, have them both on 100. For most players, I recommend having your extra pitch on zero. The only reason I have it on 100 is because I play a lot of Horizon. I've been able to quickly look down and throw my Q or my uh, tactical ability. You know, but quickly throw down my ability like that helps a lot. So that is why I have extra pitch on. Now my ADS sense, my ADS yaw speed, I have it on 160. My pitch speed, 120. And then my extra yaw, I have it on 50. I like to have it on a little bit of extra yaw just because my sense is decently low. It's not crazy high. But having it on 50 allows me to just move my sense a little bit faster when I'm not aimed over target. And it feels like there's more sticky aim, aim assist when I have the extra yaw on. Now target compensation, keep that on. That's your aim assist. Melee target compensation, so melee aim assist, you keep this on as well. Like target, target compensation style default would be 0.6 aim assist and pc would be 0.4 of course you want the most aim assist possible you want to abuse that as much as possible so keep it on default 
going over to my video settings my brightness this is why i have it on don't copy me here because everyone's monitor is different everyone's tv is different so copying my brightness won't really do anything for you i will say though you want to have your brightness on the higher end rather than low just because if you have it a little bit higher then it allows you to see enemies that are in the shadow so if there's an enemy right here let's say my thermite's an enemy with my high brightness i can easily see them if i had it really low then it would be a lot harder to see them my fov right now it's on 104 i used to play on 110 however my aim is a little bit worse on this even if my movement looked better on 110 i feel like having a 104 just makes my aim more consistent so i'm rocking that right now fov ability scaling keep that disabled this changes your fov when you're octane stimmed or your bloodhound altered which would change your sensitivity which makes it harder to hit your shot so i keep that on disabled sprint view shake keep this on minimal there's no reason to keep it on normal i don't know why it's on normal by default switch it over to minimal and you should be good audio master volume i usually keep this around like 50 percent, but this doesn't matter because again it depends on what your console audio settings are at what your headset settings are at so master volume personal preference however loud you want to hear the game sound effects volume this is all the little sound effects in the game like gunshots different pings in the game stuff like that and most importantly it's also your footsteps in the game so if you have it on 100 percent, you will hear the footsteps a lot louder than if you have it on like 50 percent, for example but keep it on 100% because footsteps are the one thing you really want to hear in Apex Legends to tell if someone's pulling up on you, where they're coming from. So keep it on 100%, 100% of the time. Dialogue volume, I keep it on 65%. I like it a little bit lower than sound effect volume. Music volume, I recommend usually keep it on zero. However, sometimes I get bored and I just like hearing the music, so I have it on 45% right now. Lobby music volume, this doesn't matter because it's just when you're not in the lobby, which doesn't affect your gameplay. I have it on 31%. Disable voice chat. I have it on right now. I should probably turn that off to be honest. Convert incoming voice to chat text. You want to keep that off just because it's more cluttered if you keep it on. Leave it off and you should be good. So those are all my settings in Apex Legends. Again, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section down below. Hope you enjoyed. Like, comment, subscribe and peace.